Hey guys, this is Mr. Boyd. So in this video, we're going to take a look at some inequality word problems and write some inequalities and graph them to report our solution set. So in this first example, we see John went to the food stand at the basketball game to buy soda and chips for him and his friends. Each soda cost a dollar, and each bag of chips cost two dollars. That's important information, so I'm going to write. Uh, I'm going to highlight that. He wants to spend less than twenty dollars. List three possible combinations of chips and sodas. So three possible combinations could be um, three sodas and um, two chips, written as an ordered pair. That would be three comma two. And I'll leave the others for you guys to list. Okay? The next we want to write an inequality. To do that, first we want to identify our variables. So let's let um let's let x equal the number of sodas. Now, normally I would use a letter here that represents sodas, uh, more like S or something, but I don't like to use S because it kind of looks like a 5. So I'm going to use X, and so I'm going to use Y for the number of bags of chips. Okay. Now, I notice that we want to spend less than $20. Now, if we think about how he's going to spend that dollar, that 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 twenty dollars, he's going to pay one dollar for a bag of for a soda, times the number of sodas. That'll give us the total cost for sodas, plus two dollars times the number of bags of chips. Will tell us the total for bags of chips, and then if we add those two together, that needs to be less than twenty dollars. Okay, let's move on down to the next section where it asks us to graph the inequality. So I've got x plus 2y is less than 20. And I notice that this is in standard form. So I'm going to use my intercepts to um, graph this. So to do that, I'm going to solve the equation x plus 2y equals 20 to find my intercept. So to do that, find my x-intercept. As always, I will substitute 0 for y and solve for x. So in doing that, I see that my x-intercept is 20. If I plug in 0 for x and solve for y, then I find out, after I divide by 2, that my y-intercept is so that should help me number the graph as well, because I know I need to go out to 20 on my x-axis, and I need to go out to, up to 10 on my y-axis. So, my y-axis is up here, my x-axis is down here. So, let's see, let's count this by 2's up this side, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then down here, um, can we count by twos as well? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, and we'll say twenty is right out here at the edge of this graph. Okay, so to plot this line, I'm going to put a y-intercept at ten, and I'm going to put an x-intercept over here at twenty. And let's see if my ruler will work this time. So, something like that. Then I'll draw this line down through here. Now, remember that line is a dashed line. There. So I don't know whether I can try this. I'm going to take out my whole line. Let's 
small eraser. If I can put some dashes in here. Yeah, that works really nice like that. So this is a dash line because none of the um, solutions are on the line because it's not equal to. Okay. So now if we use the test point 0, 0, 0 plus 2 times 0 is less than 20. 0 is less than 20. So that would tell me that this side of the line is actually going to get shaded over here. So all of my solutions are in this region here. Which should make sense to us if he's spending less than $20, he's going to have less than that line right there. So if we wanted to look for some of our solutions or possible combinations, we did use three and was it three and two back up the page here? Yep, so we use 3 and 2, which of course is right here. We could use 6 and 2 as well. And any of these combinations down here in the shaded region will, um, will give us uh, some of our solutions. So what is the difference between the ordered pairs that fall on the line and the ones that fall in the shaded area. Well, the ones on the line, the points on the line are not included, are not included in the Solution set. For example, if we use the point sixteen two, looks like sixteen two is on that line. If we use the point sixteen comma two, and we plug that into the inequality. 16 plus 2 times 2 is less than 20. Well, we see this is 16 plus 4 is less than 20, and that's a false statement. Therefore, 16, 2 is not a solution to this inequality. And notice it's not part of our uh, shaded region. It's actually on the line. And since this line is dashed or dotted, however you want to refer to it, it is not part of the solution set. Okay, guys, why don't you pause the video and try the next one. Okay, guys, I'm back with you. After having paused the video, let's see how you did. Okay, so I'm going to jump right into writing the inequality. So for this one, I'm going to let P, variable P, represent the number of pans of brownie. And I'm going to let, um, I'm going to let B represent the number of single brownie. Okay. Now, in this problem, I notice that pans of brownies are selling for $20 and single brownies are selling for $2. And we want to raise $600, but what goes unsaid here is that we want to raise at least, at least $600 to get that air conditioned transportation to the basketball. Okay? So, at least is represented by the inequality greater than or equal to. Okay? Now, how are they going to make at least $600? Well, they're going to sell pans of brownies, plus they're going to sell single brownies. But that doesn't tell us anything about how we're going to achieve that price, since P and S are just numbers of pans and numbers of singles. So we need to put our prices in there. So if we take and put 
20 times P, that would tell us that would tell us the total cost of pans. And if we put our 2 in front of our S, or 2 in front of our B, excuse me, that would tell us the total amount that we make or sell um, of singles, single bread. Okay? So, there's our inequality. Now we're asked to graph it. Again, I notice this inequality is in um, standard form because my P and my B or my X and my Y are on the same side of the inequality or equal sign. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my X intercept, my Y intercept, or my P intercept and my B intercept. Okay, and so when I look at this, I'm going to let my B or my single brownies be my y-axis, and I'm going to let my p be my x-intercept. X x. Excuse me. Okay, so to find my p-intercept, I'm going to let b equal zero. So I'm going to solve the equation 20p plus two times zero equals 600. Notice I made this an equation to find my intercept because I want to find where P is equal to. Okay, well, 2 times 0, that's just 0. I don't even need to think about that. Here I'm going to divide by 20. So P equals 30. Okay, so my P intercept is 30. Let's go ahead and plot that on the graph. Uh, well, let's hold off. We haven't even numbered this thing. So let's see, we need our P to go out to 30. So, what if we counted this by, uh, how about by 5? 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so here's my P intercept. P intercept. Okay, so then to find my B intercept, I'll plug in 0 for P and solve for B. Okay, so again, 20 times 0, that's just going to be 0. So I need to divide by 2 here. So B actually equals 300. That's a much larger number. So let's count this one by 50s, I think. So I'm going to skip every other one, and I'm going to say this is 100, 200, and 300. And then we see that our B intercept which represents our number of single brownies. So, so if we didn't sell any, if we didn't sell any pans, we would have to sell 300 single brownies. Okay. If we didn't sell any singles, we would need to sell 30 pans of brownies. That's how that works. Okay. So now we're going to graph a line from one intercept to the other, and since this is an inequality with an equal sign in it, because this is 20p plus 2b is greater than or equal to 600. This tells me it's going to be a solid line. So let me grab my ruler over here, line that up. It seems to be pretty good right there. Let me draw my line. Okay. Now, let's try zero, zero in this inequality. So 20 times zero plus two times zero greater than or equal to 600. So zero is greater than or equal to 600. That is a false statement. So that means this side of the line would be shaded. Okay, so anything up in this shaded region or anything on the line would be a solution. For instance, right here, this point, 15, comma, 150 